Hi, and welcome to part six of an introduction to Avaya Breeze. My name is Andrew Prokop, and I work at Aerosystems Integration as a communications consultant and all-around good guy. For this video, I want to spend some time talking about and demonstrating Breeze events. In the first three videos, I skirted around a warning message that appeared when a snap-in instance was created with the admin console. Today, I want to not only show you how to make that warning go away, but give you a powerful tool to integrate snap-ins with external services. Are you ready to begin? Great, let's get started. So far, I've shown you two different ways to populate data. The easiest way is to hard code the values into a task. For instance, the make call tasks requires values for caller and call it. In part one, I simply enter them into the task. In part two, I introduced you to the concept of properties and attributes and showed you how an administrator can set those values with system manager. While this adds a bit more flexibility, it's far from ideal as snap-in attributes are typically locked in. If you watched part four of this series, you saw how to set event family and event type in the start task. The call intercepted event family comes with an engagement designer and is used to launch a snap-in from an incoming call. Avaya provides a few more events that you can apply to snap-ins to allow different invocation conditions. The Breeze development platform also allows you to create your own events. Not only does this provide you with flexibility as to how a snap-in is invoked, but as you will see later in this video, it opens up a line of communications between a snap-in and a service external to Breeze. To create an event, go to the Breeze admin console and click on the Event Catalog tab. The Create button opens up a window to enter data about your event. However, for efficiency's sake, I will open up an event I previously created and walk you through it. I'm going to open up one that I call communications event. So I built communications event to contain enough information to build a basic snap-in for outbound telephony, SMS text, and emails. Family defines the event family. A single event family can contain many event types. No spaces are allowed. Family display name is for documentation purposes. Here, spaces are allowed. Event type is the event the snap-in will trigger on. In this case, I've defined something called launch alert. This is the event that I will use to launch a new instance of my snap-in. Event type display name is for documentation purposes again, and also spaces are allowed. All events require a version number. I started this event at version 1. Every event needs a JSON formatted schema. First you give it a name, then you define the schema contents. While it's possible to build the schema by hand, I would much rather use the built-in JSON schema editor. Here I've created a kitchen sink schema that contains enough information to populate make call, SMS text, and email tasks. Notice the placeholders for caller, call it, SMS recipient, SMS sender, email recipient, and on and on. While I don't necessarily need all of this information for every communications workflow, it's there if I want it. Okay, well, let's go and use this communications event. Let me close this out. To do so, I'm going to return to the designer console. I'm going to create a very simple workflow. I have a start, a make call, and an end. So with start though, let's open it up. I'm going to set the event family to my communications event. I'm going to set event type to my launch alert. Again, I need a version number. I want you to see, though, since I've used my communications event, it becomes my start schema. So let's save this. Now let's do our make call. Put make call. I need values for the calling party, the call ed party. So I can go to input mapping to start schema, and lo and behold, 
there's the collar. Here's the collar party. Make it fielding up here. Click OK. We will need an end. This together. As always, I like to validate my workflows. Zero arrows, zero errors, zero warnings. So let us save this one. Save it to my Procop folder. Call this um, com event text. Now let's deploy the workflow. And the workflow is deployed. So to launch the workflow, I need to return to my admin console. Go to workflows. Here's event test. Click on create instance. Whoa, would you look at that? So instead of that warning we were getting before, we're asked a number of questions, the questions that were in the event. So we need a caller. I'll call this 2304. And I'll use on my call it party, 2301. Now, I could fill in message body and subject and SMS sender, but since my workflow doesn't use those, it's not necessary. They are there, though, for future workflows that want to use this communications event. So let's hit OK. And here's my incoming call. I'll answer it. And then I'll release it. Using Admin Console is a very static way of launching a snap-in. What we really need is a way to create an instance of a snap-in without having to use a breeze tool. Of course, isn't that exactly what I did in Part 4 when I launched the snap-in by calling the telephone number associated with its service profile? I didn't have to go to Admin Console and click Create Instance. I can do something similar with the snap-in I just created by sending it the communications event from an outside source. For my outside source, I'm going to use Google's Postman application to create and send RESTful Web Services messages. Postman is a great development tool for creating these messages and playing with web services. In the real world, these commands would come from cloud services or business applications. I like to launch Postman from within inside of Chrome. And here is a previously created RESTful request. Near the top is the URL of my Bree server. So we see HTTPS, and then I see an IP address, which represents my Bree server. Services, eventing connector, events, is used for all RESTful requests to Bree's applications. Under the body, I see family, which is communications event, type, launch alert, version 1. These are all things that I created to match what I created in Admin Console for this event. In the event body is the JSON that will get sent to the snap-in. In this case, for my make call, I only need two things, a caller and a call ed. This was an email snap-in that I would include other things, such as subject and email recipient, and I would do it in the same way. To launch this event, I simply click on send. Here's my incoming call. I can answer it. I can release it. So basically what I did was I did the create instance that I would have done in admin console, but I did it from another application and I sent the post command to my snap in telling it to launch itself and to run. The ability to use web services to invoke snap ins is extremely powerful and the practical examples are numerous. Imagine launching snap ins from inventory systems, Internet of Things devices, property management systems medical sensors, security systems, etc., etc. Seriously, the sky is the limit as to how you can apply this technology. While, today, while today's example was trivial, the tool set that Engagement Designer provides allows for extremely sophisticated applications that go well beyond making simple telephone calls. With that, I will wrap up part six of my introduction to Avaya Breeze. Clearly, we were moving beyond the easy aspects, but I hope you are able to grasp what I'm presenting and see how you might apply it to your enterprise. Be sure to subscribe to Aero Systems Integration YouTube channel for more fun and games. 
Bye for now.